Here's a solenoid. By now you know a solenoid is just a coil of wire. By itself, it is not a magnet, but when a current runs through it, it becomes a magnet. The magnetic field of a solenoid looks just like the magnetic field of a bar magnet. There is one very important difference between the two. The magnetic field is strongest where the field lines are dense. In a bar magnet, that happens inside the bar where we cannot access it. With a solenoid, the strongest part of the field occurs in the cavity inside the solenoid. This allows us easy access to the strong magnetic field. That is why my little blue magnet domain fixer works so well. Each of the receptacles for the magnets is inside a solenoid. Let's take a quick look at the behavior of solenoids using a FET simulation. We can start with a brief summary of Faraday's observations. I have a solenoid attached to a meter and a magnet off to the side. The blue balls represent electrons in the solenoid. The magnet is not moving and neither are the electrons. When I move the magnet, the electrons move. This is because moving the magnet near the coil creates bleachers in the coil. It is worth noting that it doesn't matter who moves, the magnet or the coil. When I shake the magnet back and forth, notice that the electrons also shake. I can replace the meter with a bulb. Note that the bulb lights whether the electrons are going clockwise or counterclockwise. If I have a single small loop of wire, the bulb does not get very bright. If I increase the number of loops and the size of the loops, I can get the bulb to get very bright. But notice that the bulb is only lit when the magnet is moving. Now let's look at this from Oersted's perspective. Here is a solenoid, a battery, and a compass. When the battery is 0 volts, the electrons are stationary and the coil is not a magnet. If there is a voltage, the electrons roll downhill and the coil is a magnet. What will happen if I flip the battery? This is something that the simulation shows really well. If I slip the blanket the other way, the electrons roll the other way and the magnetic field flips as well. Here is a small solenoid. It is made of stiff copper wire that I bent into an axle. I can hang it on these aluminum hooks in between these two disc magnets. This is not particularly exciting. The copper is not magnetic and it just sits there. However, if I put a current into the solenoid, it will become a magnet and interact with the disc magnets, and it spins. In the simulation, we just saw a solenoid acting as a generator. This little solenoid is acting like a motor. Both devices use the same basic ingredients, a magnet and a coil of wire. In essence, they are the same device, just running backwards. If we put a current into the wire, it will spin. We can turn electrical energy into mechanical energy, and we call it a motor. If we spin the wire near the magnet, we will create a current in the wire. We can turn mechanical energy into electrical energy, and we call this a generator. During the last few units, we have used several devices, which we have described as charge pumps. The Van de Graaff uses separation by relative well depth as a pump. A cell uses a chemical reaction between metal and acid as the pump. This device was described as a magnetic pump. Inside this little blue gun is a magnet and a coil of wire. We can do mechanical work as the input and get electrical energy as an output. Or we can use electrical energy as the input and get mechanical energy as the output. It's a generator, but it's also a motor if we run it backwards. This is a speaker. It is made from a paper cone that is attached to a solenoid. Behind the solenoid is a large disc magnet. If I connect a battery to the solenoid, the cone pushes out. If I turn the battery around and reattach it, it sucks back in. I can use an alternating current signal to push and pull on the speaker cone and create an auditory vibration in the air that matches the frequency of the current. I put an electrical signal in and I get an audio signal out. Of course, I can imagine running this backwards. I can talk into the cone. 
my voice could vibrate the cone, shaking the solenoid. Moving the solenoid near the magnet will cause a current to be set up in the solenoid. This turns my voice into an alternating current. It's a microphone. A speaker and a microphone are essentially the same thing, but running backwards. The solenoid has a few more tricks to show us. As it sits there, this coil of wire is not a magnet. It is only a magnet when there is a current in the wires. I can use this charge pump to create a current in the wire. By tugging the handle back and forth, I can set up an alternating current in the solenoid. I'm going to hang this magnet from a spring over the solenoid. When I turn the crank one way, the magnet is attracted to the solenoid. When I turn the crank the other way, it is repelled. If I adjust my timing perfectly, I can get the magnet to jump very high. But we don't need the hand pump. Let's plug this solenoid into another solenoid. With these two wires in place, we have one big complete circuit. The wires are full of electrons, but none of them are moving because there is no pump. We can use that first hanging magnet as the pump. Do you see what's happening? I move the first magnet by hand, letting it bounce up and down on the spring. The second magnet then started bouncing up and down too. Why did it do that? As the first magnet moves, it creates a current in the system, and that current also exists in the second coil. The second coil also becomes a magnet, pulling on the other hanging magnet. If you look carefully, you'll notice that as one magnet goes down, the other goes up. That must be because one of the hanging magnets has north facing down, and the other has north facing up. Let's fix that. Now the magnets are going up and down together. Notice that no power source is required here. The original energy in the system comes from me lifting the magnet up and letting it go. Suppose I replace the bouncing magnets with speakers. If I talk into this side, my voice will come out of this side. If I talk into this side, my voice will come out this side. I've made a telephone. In fact, the original telephones did have just one cone. You put it by your mouth and talked into it, and then you moved the cone to your ear to hear the response from your friend. Just like the dancing magnets we saw, old telephones like these did not need to be plugged in to work. Your voice was the power source. Originally, there were no phone numbers. Each town had a building where the phone wires from everyone's houses went. Your speaker was always plugged in to a speaker in this building. When you wanted to talk to your sister, you would say hello into your cone, and the operator in the room would ask who you wanted to talk to. They would then plug your wires into your sister's wires so that you could talk.